Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm going to step outside of my role as a journalist and say I completely disapprove of this weather. Abominable. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Terrible. The pictures tell the story. Take a look at this. A trash barrel and a city bench looking like abstract ice sculptures as temperatures dive way below zero in many parts of the country right yeah, now. We haven't seen temperatures like this in years. In Nebraska, a building that caught fire was covered in ice as water Nebraska. sprayed by firefighters froze right up. And snow is another part of the story, obviously, as much of the country digs out from the major storm that just blew through. Take a look at the inside of this train. And uh, if you were in one of these cars, oh, wow. good luck digging out. And uh, here in New York City, the best way to get around, check it out, skis. Okay. That's how I got to work this morning, Bianca. Yeah, yeah I wonder <laughs> why you were yeah, late. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, my, my, I pulled a hammy on the way. Anyway. <laughs> hammy, you always yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. well, That's my go-to injury. <laughs> it is. Our extreme weather team is uh -huh. in place this morning and we began our complete coverage of the monster storm this morning in one of the hardest hit places, Boston, which was pummeled. And the big dig out well underway there. Our Ron Claiborne has been there since the storm hit. Good morning, Ron. Hey, good morning to you, Bianna. You know, from the Mason-Dixon line to Canada, from the upper Midwest all the way to Cape Cod, pretty much the same story, extreme cold. It's about one degree above zero here in Boston. And the official snowfall total from that storm we just had, 17.8 inches here in Boston, the unofficial total here in a lot of places, just too darn much snow. This morning, 26 states are cleaning up after a massive winter storm that broke records in some areas. The weather is being blamed for at least 16 deaths, stretching from Minnesota to New York State. Hardest hit was Boxford, Massachusetts, north of Boston, which was walloped by close to two feet of snow. Boxford hit the jackpot. It was a good storm. In Quincy, Massachusetts, south of Boston, we found Stephen Whitebread clearing the path to his front door. Is it heavy snow, light snow? No, it's light snow. No, it's pretty good. Yeah, you don't mind, no, huh? No, 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 it's good exercise. He was even kind enough to give me a few pointers in the fine art of snow shoveling. I'm not doing it right? It's no joke, though. First the snow, and then punishing wind, blanketing a huge swath of the Northeast. Take a look at this satellite image of the storm at its peak. And now bone-chilling, teeth-chattering, frostbiting, sub-zero temperatures. Chicagoland is preparing for a deep freeze. Single-digit temperatures are on the way as people continue to dig out. I guess we have to go with the road with the punches. This New Jersey postal worker's route was brought to a screeching halt when his mail truck was surrounded by floodwaters. Some drivers in Maine braving flooding ice waters. And in North Carolina, a group of hikers stranded on the Appalachian Trail. By uh, 5 o'clock, it went from not sticking at all to about 2 inches in 20 minutes. The National Guard rescuing those hikers after a long, frigid night. And in New York City, newly minted Mayor Bill de Blasio proudly told his city... 100% of primary roads have been plowed. The mayor himself even pitched in with some snow shoveling, experiencing what millions of people in the Northeast are still grappling with. And in the next few days, things are going to get really tricky because it's going to warm up well above freezing, then it's going to rain, and then it's going to go way back down well below freezing, which means a lot of these streets like Boylston Street, I know you're familiar with it, Dan, are going to look like hockey rinks in a couple of days. And Ron, we know that you are stuck in Boston. You we were unable to get back down here for the newscast this morning. Bianna has printed up uh, free Ron Claiborne t-shirts. <laughs> you look miserable, Ron. Yeah, we, we've got them for you. I need a free Ron Claiborne hoodie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, get inside and warm up. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thank you, Ron Claiborne. Okay. This storm, by the way, okay. hit right smack in the middle of one of the busiest travel periods of the year with millions of people Heading home from holiday vacations, the ripple effects being felt across America, thousands of flights canceled, passengers stranded in airports, look at that, and one of the hardest hits among the airports in America right now, LaGuardia in New York City, which is where we find ABC's Lindsay Janice. Lindsay, good morning. Good Good morning, Dan and Bianna. Things were just getting back to normal yesterday when a fresh round of cancellations came because of ice. Already on the boards this morning, we have 750 cancellations, more than that actually, and more than 2,400 delays across the country. This morning, more misery for travelers. Frozen snow making ice rinks out of tarmacs and runways. 
prompting Delta to cancel dozens of flights out of New York's JFK and Southwest to strand hundreds of passengers in Chicago. I'm just hoping I don't have to get in a car and drive to California, that's all. It comes on top of nearly 3,500 flights canceled by airlines on Friday and more than 2,600 on Thursday. The number of delayed flights since the snow first started falling now approaching nearly 50,000. Our flight just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and then finally canceled. I'm hoping not to have to spend another night far from home. It all means more of this. Travelers camped out on floors at food courts, the lucky ones on reclining camp beds. And with the weekend flight schedule up in the air, a little advice for those still hoping to head home. That's a heavy, heavy holiday weekend for people to travel. And so I think they should call before they come to the airport. A few other tips, check social media. Airlines are increasingly using Facebook and Twitter to alert flyers about travel delays and make sure you're aware of change fees. Often during bad weather, airlines will waive fees or allow you to make changes without penalty. It's not the way thousands of Americans expected their holiday to end. Horrible. Never do it again. Never, never, never. No. So Saturday is generally a lighter travel day, so we're told that some of the backlog will be cleared today, but for many people, it's going to be the beginning of next week before they get home. Bianna? Oh, a huge headache for so many Americans. Lindsay, thank you. And for many parts of the country, temperatures are expected to continue to drop even lower early next week. So just how much worse will things get? Well, we want to welcome meteorologist Brad Nitz from our ABC affiliate WS. Channel 2 Action News in Atlanta. He's freezing outside in Central Park for us. Good morning, Brad. <laughs> Yeah, good morning. Temperatures this morning in Central Park, 11 degrees. That's 16 below the average here in New York City. About six inches of snow still on the ground from what came through overnight Thursday night, early Friday morning. Now temperatures across the Northeast are only one degree in Boston. We're one below zero in Atlantic City, three below in Burlington. And we have the teens from the nation's capital up towards Buffalo this morning. Into the Midwest, we're looking at widespread and potentially heavy snow, six inches to a foot from St. Louis near Chicago, Detroit, and then an Arctic blast coming in from Canada across the Midwest. Look at these high temperatures, 13 below Monday in Minneapolis, 10 below Monday in Chicago. Those are high temperatures and dangerous cold wind chills for Monday morning. Wind chill readings. 50 to 57 degrees below zero for much of the northern plains and the Midwest. So we're looking at extreme dangerous cold there. Dan, Bianna. So you're saying it's going to be chilly. <laughs> Yeah, be a little chill. <laughs> I, I, this is how we roll at GMA. We take a meteorologist from balmy Atlanta and we force him to stand out in the freezing cold in Central Park. Brad, welcome to the hazing ritual. Puts uh, our Atlanta cold in perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll bring you inside in, in just a little bit.